Okay, so in this uh, tutorial we'll start joining the apex of this um, braced curtain wall arrangement uh, just to provide, to, so it, it really does form a three-dimensional truss at the back there and give it complete stability. Just before you do, you might want to go up to switch windows and go to your other family that you've created here, uh, truss brace family, open that up and you could safely now close that Revit close and you wouldn't want to save the changes so the changes no um, because that has been saved in uh, this curtain wall panel under the curtain wall panels as that file anyway trust based um, you may have found that you also if you didn't have that one you may have one called family one or family two or something up there close that as well you only need the project open and the project has got all of what you've been doing in the family editor loaded in. So let's join up these apexes across the back here. We'll do that. I'll just hit save this. We'll do that uh, by going to the Revit button and clicking new family and we're after an, a generic model uh, type template. So it's uh, metric generic model adaptive. So it's got to be that one metric generic model adaptive click open for that okay now let's create a reference line just anywhere in here um, and our reference line will have 3d snapping on so it'll create some endpoints for us in 3d so just click anywhere through here give it any sort of direction it really doesn't matter what direction you do it in i'll just show you that mine's going off at an angle but i only want it to be fairly short so i only want oh, the length of the line is not going to not going to give me the length of the line so do it quite short like this we'll put a length on that line so we know what we're well it doesn't really matter because they're going to be adaptive points anyway but if you've created that line fairly short um, it's a matter then of, of selecting the two endpoints having those two endpoints selected or you can do them one at a time i'll show you one at a time and making them adaptive so remember these adapter these points can't be adaptive um, you you won't get the adaptive symbol up there like i've got through here um, unless you've got only points selected so i'm going to put another point along that line somewhere just so i can create a reference plane so if i escape out of that and select the point i've got this reference plane that i can draw on might set this scale to 1 is to 5 also and zoom up on it again little short line segment there now i'm not too sure whether this scale is going to be all right but i'm going to try and draw a circle on that point so i'll select that point there go to the circle and we're going to do a radius of i think nine millimeters okay so if that gave you an error because the circle is too small You'll have to zoom up closer and to zoom up closer you might want to change the length of these points so if you select if you select them you can grab any one of these red or green grips or the little blue arrow in between the red and green grips and you can sort of drag this line to any other length okay so we've got this point uh, with a circle around it we've got a line so if i select both of those select and select um, I can create a form oh, okay sorry you must have had something that can do control Z uh, select the line and control select the circle this time I think I've got it and create a form so that was obviously the form that I was after there okay so that's called family night oh what I'll do here is I'll set up some family types so I'm clicking in the family types here. And I'll create a new family type. Oh, cancel. Sorry. Undo a couple of steps. Control Z. Ah, oh, here we go. I need to put a dimension on here. So as long as that point is the current reference plane, by selecting it, I can type DI for the dimension tool, click on diameter, and put a diameter symbol. Diameter dimension. Select the diameter dimension and then I can go up to the label and I can add a parameter and I'll call this parameter diameter um, I'm going to 
to leave it as a tight perimeter. Okay, so I've got my diameter set at diameter 18 there. Um, I, while I'm up here, I'll go to the family types and I'll click create a new family type called 18. And that's got a diameter of 18. And I'll, just to show you what you can do, I'll do a new family type name of 25 and I'll change the diameter up to 25. So if I click apply, I can notice that change in the drawing editor. If I drop down 18 and click apply, it goes back to 18, so I can click OK. So now I can select the circle, not the dimension, tab through until you've got just the circle, and the reference line, and create a form. So I've created a form and I can control the diameter of that rod. Okay, and I've got some family types associated with it. Now mine, take a note of what yours is called up the top here. Mine is called Family 9. So when I go loading it back into the project, I'll just escape for a moment. I'm about to place that. But we'll scroll down here under the families and under generic models. Uh, there's curtain panels. Down below curtain panels, you've got generic models. And I'll just delete this one. And you should have your latest family that you just loaded in. Mine was called Family 9, and I've got Type 18 and Type 25. So I could rename that to keep this tidy. I could rename that from Family 9, and I might call this uh, Brace. Okay, so it's now called Brace. Now, because I've now renamed this, it would be safer if I went straight back to Switch Windows, opened up my family again, and use the Revit button to close that. I don't need to save changes because I've just loaded it into the project and it exists in the project here. And it exists in the, in the project um, and it's called, I just find it in the project here, and it's under generic models and it's called Brace and I've got an 18 and I've got a 25. So next thing I want to do, I want to be able to accurately place them and I just remember when we created this um, truss braced curtain wall panel um, it's, if I try to place these at that apex through there there's probably lots of points that that would pick up just at that end it's not going to be very accurate to do that so I'll show you what I'll do in that case we'll find this under you've got it loaded up here where you created your curtain panel there's the one that I created called trust braced curtain panel so I'm going to edit that and do something to it in these break these elements through here if I hover over until I get form element and tab to I've got both of them I'll go down to my sunglasses and hide those do that to the other one um, tab sunglasses and hide okay and I'm just going to leave behind a model line and I'm just going to grab a model line it goes you know, from somewhere along one of those uh, reference lines up to the apex and this is with 3D snapping on up to the apex and down the other side just for a short distance okay. now, so that that model line that I've just drawn there now okay, through there, um, well, that, that line and combine that line they are going to actually be loaded back into our project in a second now you won't see them normally, I'll just reset my sunglasses. You won't see them because they'll be, be hidden behind these things. But what I'll do is if I hover and tab, so I select that, and while they're selected, right click on them and go up to visibility. And if I turn their visibility off when in course mode, that way, they, these things that are selected on my screen at the moment, I don't want them to show up when I'm in course mode. So I've turned it off in course mode. Click OK. Do the same to the ones in the other direction. Tab. For these two also. Right click, visibility, and uncheck course mode. Now if I load that back into my project, at the moment we've got parameters in here, so the same thing will be um, overall the existing version and its parameters. 
nothing appears to have changed. But if I go down in court and change to course mode here now, I'll see that those back braces disappear because I'm in course mode and I told them not to be visible in course mode. And I'm left with these little lines at the back which will indicate to me where the intersection of that apex was. So I can change back to fine mode or medium for that matter if I want to see them. But for the moment, I'm going to go to course mode so I can't see them. And what I'm going to be able to do then is go and grab my family, which was the generic model, and I'll bring the number 18 one in. Just drag it into the screen and click that point there, end point, as the starting. And I'll go right across to this one here. And wait for it to get there. Click that one, like that one, because I think that just slipped. So I need to do that one again. Make sure it did. So I place it just there at that end point, wait for end point to happen. My graphics card's taking a little while to actually get there. There we go, we've got an end point. So now go to this end point through here. And I might try and zoom in so I don't slip this time. And get it right on that end point there until it says end point. And click that. And I've placed that one. So I could then continue to place it on all of the others. Um, you do it horizontally and vertically. Bring another one in. End point. Go to the end point at the other end. No. There we go. Okay. So I'll just start uh, pause the video while I finish off the other ones and we'll show you the finished product. So um, as after I did all the horizontal ones, I just selected them all and used my sunglasses to come down and hide those elements. Um, that way I've got a clear run at putting the vertical ones in, so now I can come back to my sunglasses and reset that, and I've got the verticals and the horizontals in place. So if I go back to fine mode, I've got the entire three-dimensional space frame created here now. Okay. So what we'll do next, I'll just uh, pause the video at this stage, stop the video at this stage, and we're going to do some more adaptive components and do a special custom ceiling in this space uh, to learn a little bit more about adaptive components. So I'll just stop the video now and we'll see you at the next one. Okay, so what I could do then is I could just go back down to my visual style down here. And if I just set my visual style back to fine mode, I can see the final arrangement in place there. Okay, so in the next video, we'll um, what we'll do is we'll look at learning a bit more about some adaptive components, and we'll create a, a custom ceiling joist arrangement um, using adaptive components.